Welcome to Live Doc, your online Doc Yomi Shear. Shalom and welcome back to today's Daf, which is Psachim Yud Gimel. We are two lines from the top. We know that Minat Torah, one stops eating chametz at Chatzos. In the Rabbana, they pushed it back somewhat. Rabbi Machlokes, to what extent they pushed it back? According to Rabbi Yehuda, they pushed it back two hours. So you stop eating your chametz at the end of the fourth hour. Two hours before Chatzos, we're concerned about confusion and mistakes. Whereas according to our mayor, Chachamim only pushed it back one hour. So you eat your chametz the first five hours of Erev Pesach. According to Rabbi Yehuda, it depends. Truma which you're not meant to dispose of so easily, that we allow you to eat up until the fifth hour. Whereas when it comes to chulin, you stop two hours before chatzois, you stop at the fourth hour. So you have three shittas. Now, who is the halacha like? Says the Gemara two lines from the top of the Amid, Amar of Nachman, Amar Rav, Halacha ke Rabbi Yehuda. The halacha is like Rabbi Yehuda, you stop at the fourth hour. Amar le Rav of Nachman. The name of Mar, why don't you say halacha ke Rabbi Meir? Why? The Sasamon Tanakavase, because we have a Stam Mishnah, an anonymous Mishnah, which follows Rab Meir, and we're meant to follow a Stam Mishnah, which indicates that that is the halacha. This non Kol Shah Shemut Alecha, Machel, is the first Mishnah and the next parak. As long as one can eat chametz, he can also feed chametz to his animal. And what does this indicate? That eating and feeding, Achil and Hana, Go hand in hand. This evidently is following Shita's Rebbe Meir who says, you stop eating and having a knot at the end of the fourth hour. Because according to Rabbi Yehuda, although Achila stops at number four, but you can still have a knot during hour number five. Apparently this Mishnah which ties Achila and Hanot together is following Rabbi Meir. Says he loves the So he responded, no, actually that Mishnah is not a stop Mishnah in accordance with Shita's Rebbe Meir. Mishum the kasha mutter because the gemara actually has a kasha on that mission. The mission says kol shosh mutter leechol machal behema. This is the gemara in the beginning of the second parak. What's the point of mutter leechol kol shosh shoechol machal? The mission should have said as long as you can eat, you can feed. Why kol shosh mutter leechol? That indicates that we're speaking about two different people. So as long as the koyen can still eat, meaning. All along that fifth hour, although the Yisrael can't eat, but the Kayin can, along that fifth hour, the Yisrael can still feed to his animal, because he can still have a no. So, that mission is not following Rameir at all. The mission that splits between the Kayin and the Yisrael, evidently is following Shita's wrong Amlil, not Rameir. So we don't have an anonymous Mishnah in line with Rameir's Shita. Says the Gemara, Okay, the name of Mars. So why don't you say Halacha Rabbi Gamliel? The Halacha follows Rabbi Gamliel, who says it depends. Chulin can be eaten up to four, Truma up to five. Why would we follow Rabbi Gamliel? The Havale Machria, because Rabbi Gamliel is offering a compromise between Rabbi and Rabbi Yudah. Rabbi Yudah says you have to stop at four. Rabbi Yudah says you have until five. Rabbi Gamliel proposes a compromise. He says, well, Chulin stop at four, Truma. You extend until five. That's a compromise, and generally we follow. The Allah follows the shita that's a machria, that compromises between the other shitas. Amr lay. So if Nachum responded, it doesn't apply in this case. Rabbi Gamliel love machriahu. He's not offering a compromise. Rather, Tam did not shake He's merely proposing his own perspective and opinion because Rabbi, Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yudha never discussed. Any possible differences between Chulun and Truma? They didn't even mention Chulun and Truma. Rabbi says you stop at four. Rabbi Yudah says stop at five. They didn't refer to Truma or Kachim. Therefore, when Rabbi comes and tells us, well, it depends if it's Chulun, you stop here. If it's Truma, you stop there. He's not really considered compromising between the other Shittas. He's not making reference to them. It's an independent view, a new perspective, and is not considered Machriya. And therefore, we don't follow that Shittas. Or alternatively, why does Rav say halacha ki Rabbi Yehuda? Rav the Amar ki Haytana. Rav was following the following Tana in the following Brisa. Who holds like Rabbi Yehuda? 
And the Gemara concludes, indeed, that the halacha is meant to follow that sheet, the Sanya Arba Sar Shecholiyaz B'Shabbos. The 14th day of Nisan, Erev Pesach, falls out on Shabbos itself. When do you uh, dispose of your chametz? When do you burn it? Mivarin as hakol milfnei Shabbos. You burn your entire supply before Shabbos. V'sorif and trumais, tameyais, all types of trumais. You can burn as well, whether they are tamei, whether they are tluyais. Tluyais means there's an uncertainty whether they're so, they're tamei or tar. You burn that as well. Utahiris, even truma tahira. You burn before Shabbos. Ask Tosis, how can one burn truma? We're not meant to do that. We're meant to safeguard, secure the truma. So that's Tosis because that only applies to something which is slated for consumption that you can eat, but this truma is going to be aser. Right? Tosis says soifali aser v'leilachli ibu. It's going to be aser and get destroyed in any case. It's not intended for consumption. Therefore, there's no iser to burn it even ahead of time, even before it's actually aser. So you burn everything before Shabbos, before Erev Pesach. Umeshayrin, but you leave something over for your Shabbos meals. Umeshayrin minat ahirois, mazayin shtei sudois. You leave two sudo worths of the truma tahira, k'day lecher adal shois, to supply you until four hours in the day. So you have one Suda Friday night, one Suda Shabbos morning, which you can eat up until four hours. Divrei, Rabbi Lezer, Ben Yehuda, Ishba Soisa, came from that town, Bar Soisa, who said in the name, Sha'ama Mishur Bishu, said in the name of Yeshua, that this is how you meant to go. Burn everything, all your chametz, leave just a bit over for your Shabbos meals, which you meant to conclude by the fourth hour. So apparently he's following Shitas, Rabbi Yehuda, that you meant to stop eating chametz two hours before Chatzos. Okay, continues the Bryce regarding Truma. Amru lois, so the Chacham responded to him. Tahira is lois sarf. The Truma Tahira should not be burned. Leave it, leave it around, just in case maybe a kain will come along and eat it. Shema yimatzalem oichlam. Perhaps you'll find some uh, some people to eat it on Shabbos. So wait until the last moment. Now, worst case, if you don't find anybody, just feed it to the dog of a, of a koyin, or do bittel. But don't actually burn it ahead of time. Amr lehen, so, Rabbi Lezer responded, look, there's no reason, there's no need to do that. There's no point. Kvar bikshu v'le matzo, they looked for people. They looked for kahanam. They didn't find anybody. They didn't know that there's no kahanam in the city to eat this truma. So what's the point of holding on to it? Amr lehen, so they responded, well, you never know. Shama chutz l'choyim alone, perhaps there's some kahanam hiding out of the, outside the city. So, perhaps... You don't know about them. They'll show up on Shabbos. Maybe they slept outside the Chaimah and they'll be here tomorrow. Amr lahem. So he told them, look, if you're going to entertain every possibility, look, the Rechem are going to you. Aft Luis, Lady Sarfu, even the Truma, which is totally, which has a suffix, whether it's Tomah Tor, you agree that you burn it. No, even that you shouldn't burn. You know why? Shema Yob Elio. Perhaps Elio and Abba will arrive on on Shabbos, Erev Pesach. Be a tyrant. He'll tell us, well, this thing is Torah, you can eat it. So if you're going to be concerned about any scenario, any possibility, so when it comes to that, you should be concerned as well. Wait until the last moment. Amr um, said, told, no, that's not a possibility. Why? Because Kali Yisrael is sure and guaranteed. He doesn't arrive. He won't come in Erev Shabbos or Erev Yantiv. No, not to disrupt the, the Torah, the effort, the Shabbos and Yantiv preparations. So we know he won't come today. He won't come Erev Shabbos. He won't come on Shabbos, which is Erev Pesach. So, there's no point in holding on to the Suffolk Truma, which will have to be burnt in any case. Have to be destroyed in any case. Won't be, won't be consumed in any case. When it comes to the Truma Tahir, hold on to it, just in case. Okay, let's stop for a moment. Take a look at Rashi inside. So Rashi is immediately to the right. We're looking for a um, reason why Rav decided that Allah follows Rabbi Yehuda. That's how we began today's da. From Nachum said in the name of Rab, Allah Rabbi Yehuda, we want to know why he chose Rabbi Yehuda. Says the Gemara, you know why? Because Rab is following the Tana in this b'risa. As the Gemara will conclude soon that the Allah was established in accordance with this Tana, who follows Rabbi Yehuda's shita. Everybody is saying, Rab Dama Tana, he's following the following Tana, the cover, Hilchas Rabbi Yehuda, Lez Rabbi Yehuda. And as we're going to see soon, the Gemara established the Allah in accordance with that Tana, Rab Lez Rabbi Yehuda, the Amar who says, Afilo truma kal arba. Basulo, even when it comes to truma, you have until four hours to eat it, and no more than that. The Ketani, the Kav Allah HaKamaysay, as the Gemara Sun will tell us, that the Allah was established according to this Shita, 
you have until hour four to eat. That's why Rav chose Rabbi Yehuda. The Gemara told us about Erev Pesach, which happens to fall down on Shabbos. So when do you burn your chametz? You do it all before Shabbos. Even the Truma. Even Tuluyos, John Limbo, Suffolk, Tmei, Suffolk, Tahirais, you burn everything, but you just leave yourself a bit for Shabbos. How much? Enough for two Sudas. Mazayin, Shtei Sudas, Veloy Shalish. So Rashi has a kasha. What happened to the third Suda of Shabbos? The Chal Shalish Sudas to Shabbos, Arvis, Shachos, Mecha. Says Rashi, when are the three Sudas? At night, morning, and afternoon. That's a problem because the Erev Pesach also lechol, but I'm in Cholam Malo. When I'm meant to sit down to a meal on Erev Pesach in the afternoon, it's going to interfere with the appetite and anticipation of the, of the matzah. So therefore, that meal is not accounted for. We only reserve enough chametz for two meals, the night meal and the morning meal. When a parent says, because the Shabbos afternoon meal won't be able to be done with chametz. It's after chatzot. That's why you don't reserve anything for that suda. So this was the sheet of Rabbi Lezer, Ben Yehuda. You burn everything except for two meals worth. The Chum responded to him, no. Tahirah is slow yisarf. Cloud, don't burn the, the truma tahir at all. Why? Since the time of beer has not yet arrived. It's still before the Erev Pesach even. So leave it alone. Now, even though he doesn't seem to really need it, this coin left, left over for his family supply. Nevertheless, leave it alone. Perhaps he'll find some guests to feed them the truma. He'll find kohanim guests to feed them the truma. And perhaps he'll be able to avoid destroying the truma with his hands. The truma. Now, if he happens not to find kohanim, how's he going to dispose of the truma? So tomorrow I'll give it to the Kayin's uh, dog. Believe it or do bittel. Rabbi Lezer responded, <laughs> He already looked for Kehanim, he didn't find anybody. There's nothing more to look for. On Shabbos no guests will surface. He already is well versed with the goings on in the city, he knows exactly who's living, who lives here, but Eisen should be here, me obviously, he knows who's coming, who's not coming, there's no point, in reserving, extra chametz, so they told, no, maybe there's somebody outside the city, waiting to arrive, Lonu, they slept outside the city, Loshen Molin, lodging, Shema Betoich Atchum, Lonu Kanam Erchem, Halayla, perhaps, there are Kahanim, within the territory, within the Tchum of the city, and, uh, Viyavar Lomachat, I'll show up tomorrow, so he responded, well, you're going to entertain all these possibilities. After the very chem, according to you, the chashin and the shema, if you're concerned about this shema, this possibility, then let me ask you a question. Why are you only disagreeing when it comes to truma tahira? Reserve it for the, for the, um, surprise guests. If that's the case, after when it comes to the truma tahira, leave it alone, don't burn it yet. Perhaps the yo will arrive today or tomorrow. Before the time of beer, I'll make them tar. I'll say, well, I know for a fact this wasn't, this didn't even come to me, and now you can eat it. So they responded, well, yo is not really a realistic possibility. Because it doesn't come on Erev Shabbos or Erev Yamtiv. Today's Erev Shabbos, he won't come. Why doesn't he come? Because because Kalash is meant to be involved in the preparation for the Shabbos Sudais, and this will distract him. So he won't come at that inopportune moment. Now, although we're speaking about Erev Pesach, which is Shabbos, so he's not really involved in preparing, it's Shabbos. So Tyson in Erevin actually explains it's going to interfere with preparations for the Shabbos Suda. He's setting up for the Suda. It's, it's going to be a, uh, a distraction from that, and therefore, he won't come on that day as well. Okay, so this was the back and forth between Rabbi Lezer, Yehuda, and Rabbana. Let's go back to the Gemara. Amru, so they said, Loizazim Misham, they didn't budge from there at Shekava Halacha, Kerab Lezer, Ben Yehuda, Ishba Soisa, that the Halacha was established in accordance with this Shita, Rabbi Lezer, Ben Yehuda, Sheama Misham, be sure that, that what? So he really said two things. He said, burn everything before Shabbos. Don't be concerned about these surprise guests. And number two, 
he indicated in his words that what is the deadline for chametz? Four hours. He said, leave something over for Shabbos to be eaten up until four hours. Says the Gemara, my love, I feel echo. Shall we not say that the halacha followed this opinion even when it comes to the question of deadline, eating deadline? Four hours, which is Rabbi Yudah and our Mishnah. And that's why perhaps Rav chose Rabbi Yudah over Rabbi Yudah because of this conclusion, this halacha. I'm Rav Papa, Mishmei the Rav, no, loy levayr. When we say they were kaveh al-halacha, it was only in reference to the question of what are you meant to burn? What are you meant to get rid of before Shabbos? And in reference to that, we follow Rabbi Leza that, yeah, get rid of everything except for two Sudeis worth. But perhaps when it comes to the exact eating deadline on Erev Pesach, maybe we follow Rabbi Rabbi Meir. And we give you an extra hour. We don't follow Rabbi Leza and Yehuda that the deadline is hour number four. Continues the Gemara. Va'av Rebbe Savala the Rav Nachman. We actually find that Rebbe as well seems to hold of Rav Nachman's opinion that the Allah follows Rebbe Yehuda. That we stop eating chametz at hour number four. To Amar Ravan Barav Adah Ma'asabad Mechad was a story with a certain person. Shehifkid Diskia he deposited this Diskia Rashi says D is a Lashon of two, a double pouch, a double leather pouch. Malaya chametz, filled with chametz. Eitzel yoichanon chakuko. He deposited it with yoichanon chakuko. And it came out of Pesach. And it was still there. It was filled with chametz and still in his possession. And some mice bored holes in the, in the pouch. And the chametz was creeping out, protruding out of this uh, sack. Now, it was Erev Pesach. Yechanan knew that sooner or later this chametz is going to become answer and worthless. So he wanted to know what he's meant to do with the chametz here. So he approached Rebbe, Shari Shaina, during the first hour of the Erev Pesach, and he asked him, should I do something with it? Omar lay, so Rebbe responded, Omar lay hamtin, wait, wait around. Maybe the owner will come by and, um, and take it and eat it. Don't go sell it in the marketplace. Raj, it seems from Rashi that there will be loss involved. Just to sell it, he's going to lose money. Chametz is very cheap today. Or perhaps the, the owner doesn't want you to sell it. He wants to hold on to this Chametz. So hold on to it. Shnia, come the second hour, he approached Rebbe again. What should I do? Should I sell it? Amalei Hamten, wait around. Shlisha, same thing happened the third hour. Amalei Hamten, wait around. Revis, once the fourth hour approached, Amalei Hamten, again, hold on to it, wait around. Chamishis, it's the fifth hour. Amr Lai, now he told him, same Rechab go sell in the marketplace. Now the Maram Chalava points out the reason why the Gemara mentions that the Chametz was Mevatsvitz for Yitzhak, which was creeping out and getting lost, to indicate that if not for the fact that it was Erev Pesach and a much greater loss will result by ignoring the Chametz and not selling it, if not for that, there wouldn't be really a concern with this uh, little bit of Chametz getting lost. It's just a small minor loss, that wouldn't justify actually selling it. It's only because the Chametz is actually going to become Asr, completely Asr. That was reason to justify sale. So he told him, go sell it in the marketplace, which indicates, go out there and find some customers. My love of Nachrim, apparently he's referring to Goyim. Kirabi Yehuda, who holds that once hour number five approaches, a Yisrael can no longer consume the Chametz. He had to find Goyim customers. I'm Rabbi Yisuf now, Lord Yisrael, or Rabbi Meir. Perhaps he's referring to Salim to Yid, who can still eat the Chametz during the fifth hour, and lying to Rabbi Meir Shita. So perhaps Rabbi is found with Rabbi Meir, not Rabbi Yudah. I'm going to buy it. Eli Yisrael, if he is going to sell to Yisrael, and that's what Rabbi had in mind, Nishkel and Nafshei, why do you tell him, why do you have to tell him to go to the marketplace? For the same money, he could just buy it off himself. So that's what Mishim Cheshad, not meant to do so. Because it can evoke suspicion. Perhaps th- people think when he uh, does this private transaction under wraps, uh, perhaps he's uh, shortchanging the owner. He's not paying him full value. So he meant to do things transparently out in the open and full public view. The Sanya, as we learned in the price. It's stuck collectors who have money, who have coins, but no anim to give the money to. 
So Rashi explains they have these copper coins which will get uh, spoiled and rusty. So they're trying to convert it to silver coins. Do it with other people's money. For the person, the Atzman. Don't do it. They can't do it with their own money, privately. In order to do things transparently in full public view so that they avoid any perception of impropriety. Likewise, Gabay Tam food collectors, Shein Lemanil Chalak, who don't have any poor people to give the food to, Moich Lachem, they sell to other people, Vey Moich Lachman, but not to themselves, Mishim Shanamar. Why does a person have to maintain proper public uh, image and appearance? Why is that required? We have a Pasuk, Shanamar, Vey Yisem Neki, Me Hashem, you meant to come clean from Hashem, Umi Yisroel, and also create that proper image and perception amongst your fellow Yisrael. So, according to Yisrael's response, there's no riot from Rebbe that he holds like, like Rabbi Yehuda. Perhaps he was selling it to Yisrael during the fifth hour. And according to Rabbi Meishit, Amalir of Adab Masnar of Yisrael. So he told Rabbi Yisrael like this, Rashi explains that Yisrael forgot his learning and his Talmudim would, from time to time to time, remind him so you told her very you know, you yourself told us, the Farish Amraslan, say that Rebbe instructed him to sell the Hamas specifically to a guy. Apparently, Rabbi Yehuda. This is line Rabbi Yehuda. You can Israel can no longer eat that Hamas. So indeed, according to Rabbi Yehuda's uh, version here, Rebbe Paskin like Rabbi Yehuda, and that's what the Gemara meant earlier that Rebbe Vaf Rebbe. Held like Rabbi Yehuda. Om Rav Yosef, Kaman Azla Hashmata, the Rebbe. This halacha, when Rebbe tells him, go sell the, the deposit, go sell the chametz, and get its value, and return that to the owner. In accordance with whose view, whose shita is reflected here. Kaman Azla Hashmata, the Rebbe. That you can go ahead and sell a pikada, something that doesn't belong to you, in order to salvage it for the sake of the owner. Apparently, it's following this sheet. It's not. A mafket pays it's a chaver. If one is mafket, he deposits for safekeeping some parrots by his chaver. Even if there's loss happening here, some of the, the parrots are getting lost, are getting spoiled, getting eaten by the, by the creatures. Don't touch them. The Gemara Bab explains according to one approach because a person wants to hold on to his personal produce in which he invested much effort and toil and tircha. So even though it's going to lessen as time goes along, he still wants it. So hold on to it for him. Don't sell it. Rabbi Hashim Gamayel Oymer, no, Moichim Bezin, he should go sell it with the Bezin's permission. Because he is salvaging the person's property. Apparently Rabbi, who allowed and instructed this person to sell the Chametz, in order to avoid losing the Chametz completely, was in line with who? The Shita of Rav Hashim Gamliel. And not Rabbi. And not uh, the Tanakam. Omelah Abaye. So Abaye responded, not necessarily. Haven't we learned Pshat on this, Mishnah? Omer Rav Abarachana. Omer Rav Yechim. Loishonu. This discussion, this Machleg, only pertains where? Elo Bechdei Chesroinam. When the loss that's taking place is within the realm of normalcy. It's, it's typical, a typical loss. But if it's more than that, there's a great, great amount of produce being lost here. In that case, all agree, you can go sell the bezin. Certainly in this case, where it's Chometz and Erev Pesach, they're going to become valueless, going to become lost completely. So going to all shittas, certainly you go ahead and sell that chametz, so at least salvage the value for the owner. Okay, so in summation, we learned that Rav as well as Rebbe conclude that the halacha follows Rabbi Yehuda that mid Rabbanon you meant to stop eating chametz two hours before chatzos, the end of the fourth hour. We learned about erev Pesach that happens to fall out on Shabbos. It's according to Rebbe and Yehuda. You burn everything, even your truma. Before Shabbos, you leave yourself over just a little bit for two meals, Friday night and Shabbos morning. 
According to Chacham, however, we leave the Truma Tahira over just in case some surprise guests will arrive. And we concluded that when a person has a Pekodon, which will be totally lost, for instance, the Chamas and Rav Pesach, all will agree that you go ahead and you sell it so that you salvage the value for the owner. Continues the Gemara. So these were the two Chalais placed on the Harabais to serve as a public reminder for the uh, Zman Achilas Chometz and Zman Shrefas Chometz. Tani, Tana. Come the Rav Yudah, there was a Amayr who presented this Mishnah in front of Rav Yudah as follows. Where did they place those two Chalais? Al Gav Ha'itztaba. On top of this low-lying bench, which wasn't really publicly seen. Ahom Malayi Rabida responded, what's the point of doing that? Chilat Tznin Utsarav, they tried to hide them? Rather, Tzni, you meant to learn like this, Al Gag Ha'itztaba. That they placed the two Chalais on the roof of the Itztaba up above, so that it's visible and serves as a public indicator for this man, Achil and Zman Shreif. Omar, Chava, Omar, Rabbi Yehuda. Har Habayis. On the Har Habayis, there was a double arrangement of these uh, canopies. Stav Kafal Haya. So Stav is a reference to these arches, these um, roofed areas, these terraces. So it was actually a double arrangement. Along the perimeter of Har Habayis, there was these um, terraces and another another row of these arches inside that row of arches. Stav Kafal Haya. Rabbi Daimer is Stavonis Haysa Nikris. It was called a Stavonis, which indicates a double stuff. Stav Lifnim is stuff. So there's an outer arrangement along the outer perimeter of the Harabais, all these terraces surrounding, and then inside of it was another arrangement. Continues the Gemara. So these Chalais that were placed there were Psulais. Chalais Toida that were Puzzle. Am I Psulais? Why were they Puzzle? How did they become Puzzle? Om Rab Chanina. Since there were so many of those chalais, which were chametz, nefsolis belina, they became possible by staying overnight, because they were brought the day before Erev Pesach, hoping that they would be consumed before Pesach, and there were so many of them, not enough eaters, so inevitably some of them remained overnight and became possible. So now it's Erev Pesach. We have chalais toida, which are possible belina, and they were used as an indicator to notify regarding the Zman, Achila, and Zman Shreif. The Sanya is going to the price. Ein Mavin, Toida Bechag Amatis. We're not meant to bring a carbon Toida on Pesach. Why? Because there's Chametz involved. Some of those 40 Chalits were Chametz. Ten of them were Chametz. So you can't do it on Pesach. Pshita, of course. Why would I think otherwise? On Adabar Ava, he's not speaking about on Pesach itself. Hacha Biyudal Daskinon. The price is referring to Erev Pesach. When I'm meant to bring a carbon toida even on Erev Pesach, you know why? Because Savar Ein Mevin Kachin Lubeis Absol. This Tana holds that when I'm meant to cause the carbon to become possible. So, since generally speaking, a carbon toida can be eaten for a day and a night, but bringing this on Erev Pesach, he's going to shorten, he's going to lessen the Zman Achila because the Chametz within it can only be consumed up until midday. And it's going to become, you have to burn it at that point. Therefore, we don't allow him to bring a toy even on Erev Pesach. So, as a result of that restriction, what happens? So, all bring their carbon toy to when? On the 13th day before Erev Pesach. And since there are so many carbons, it's because there are so many, they became possible, and they used two of those chalais for the harabais. Let's take a look at Rashi inside. So it's about nine lines from the top of the Ahmed. Beginning with the words Mitoyk Shem So the Gemara explains because there were so many of them. There was an abundance of these Lach Mitoyda. And they became possible. Explains Rashi. Lach Mitoyda Bishlai Shasa Benis. And since there were so many on the 13th, Shakomi Shesha Lahabi Toyda Bereg. Whoever has to bring a carbon Toyda on Yom Tov Maria Bavia Bishlai Shasa brings it on the 13th. And as a result, Nif Salis Bilina. The Baikr shall you doubt. Once they stay overnight, they become possible. Lachmei Toida comprised of 40. Mem Chalais V'yud Mem Chames. They were comprised of 40 Chalais. Ten of them were Chames. Shanema Al Chalais Lechem Chames. 
and we can't do it on Erev Pesach. Why? Ain't levin kasher mitzah psul. Ain't levin carbon biyoyim. She is smart. Zman achilose shekavalei tor. We're not meant to bring a carbon on a day where it's going to result in lessening and shortening. This zman achila, the nitzav bal day noisa, which will cause it to become noisa prematurely. A toyda nechalas liyam v'layla. A toyda can be eaten for day and a night. V'im yivim biyadalud el nechalas shal chametz el achei shoyz. So you're going to shorten this manachil because if you bring an air pesach, the chametz can only be eaten until chatzayis. Therefore, you can't bring the carbon air pesach and the kuli alma biud gimel meisel. So they all bring it on the thirteenth. Kol mish all of toida maybe biud gimel. The fish alay akrivenu lemachar can't bring it tomorrow. The kashkim pesach and certainly not on pesach. And as a result of that, they have solos belina. She'en le moichem kol kach. There are not enough eaters. Umeshum the psul is for angles. How you? So that explains matters. Since these things were already possible, the chalas were already possible belina, they turn and shum so they were placed on the harbais to serve as an indicator. Explains Rashi. The imo yikshiris because if they would have been kosher and edible, lo yo yo nice and nice and shum, they wouldn't put it on the harbais. They left poisel be a daim, which will result in making it possible. doing it manually, directly making it possible. Shum benachas shum ad zman abir and strafites. Going to leave it there until zman abir and then burn it. You wouldn't do that if it's kosher. Evidently, we're speaking about chalas already puzzled. How are they puzzled? Because all will bring their carbonus study yesterday. Due to the overabundance of the karba of the chalas and none of eaters, and everyone someone that would stay overnight become puzzled. Come out of Pesach, you have chalas psulits, which are used as an indicator, and then they'll go ahead and burn it when the zman strafa arrives. That's the first pshat in the Gemara. Continues the Gemara. Mishum Rabbi Yami Amru. So in the name of Yami, they gave another explanation to our Mishnah. What were these chalai psulas? Actually, ksheris hayu. They weren't really puzzle. Well, am I heard the psulas? Why is the Mishnah refer to them as psulas? Because they were partially puzzle. They weren't fit for for achila, but they were somewhat kosher. Shalinishcha talein hazevach. What happened was that you didn't. The the carbon toida was not shechted on their behalf, and we know that. The chalis toida become kadosh how through the carbon toida, through the shechita, through the zrika, that is mekadosh the lechem. Since there was no shechita on the carbon, the lechem is not edible; it's not fit for consumption, and that's why they would use it for that, for that purpose. Finish chayt. So why don't you just go shech the carbon? Shavat hazevach. Zevach got lost. Okay, so bring another carbon to replace the first one and do the shchit. The Amar Zutoyde Vzulach. Well, speaking where he designated. He says, this is the carbon toyde and this is its bread. In which case, he can no longer substitute, replace for the lost carbon because this bread has been attached and committed to this animal and can't be applied to another animal. Look at the Rabbah. The Amar Rabbah's Rabbah said, in this case where he designated Zutoida Vuzulachma and the bread went lost, went missing, maybe Lechem Macher. Simple solution, just bring another batch of bread and replace the first one. However, of the Toida, but let's say the Toida, the animal itself, went missing, and maybe Toida Achers, he cannot replace it with another Toida. My time, what's the difference between the Lechem and the Toida? Lechem Glal Toida. Because the bread, the Lechem, is coming. Glal is like big glal. As a result, it, it's, it's, it's secondary <laughs> to the toida. It's coming on account of the toida. So, once you've designated this bread for this toida, you can't use this bread for a different toida. It's been designated and committed for this animal. The ain't toida glal lechem. However, the toida animal is not coming on account of the lechem. It's not subordinate and secondary to the bread. It's actually the ikr. Of the two things. And therefore, even if the lechem somehow went missing, you can replace it with another batch of lechem and apply it to this toida. So we're speaking where he said, Zutoida Zulachma, the behema went missing. So now the toida, the, the lechem, is sitting here without any purpose because you can't use it for another carbon. And that was the lechem they would use on the Harabites. The Nefrakino. So why can't he just redeem it? Do pity it. Why do you have to leave it up on the Arbayis, wait till it gets pasal, asr, bachil, and burn it? Just be paid it. And take the money, the value, 
and perhaps purchase with it another batch of, of lechem in the future. Why take this lechem and burn it? And just turn it into chulen. And then you can just eat the bread before chatzois, before these mana sreif. Apparently we're speaking that the carbon was shecht, it was shechita done. However, the process wasn't completed. In order to properly be makadish to lechem, you have to do two things, shechita and zrika. He did shechita, but no zrika, v'nishpach, adam, the dam spilled out. So he never came to the point of zrika. Now since the shechita took place, that granted some minimal form of Kedusha to the Lechem, it's now no longer just Kedusha as Damim, Kedusha on account of its monetary value, a monetary Kedusha which allows for Pidyan, for redemption, it's already Kedush, Kedusha Sagov, it's been bumped up to a higher level of Kedusha, it's inherently Kedush, because the carbon had Shechita, which grants the Lechem some form of Kedusha. Now once it's inherently Kedush, Kedusha is Haguf, Essentially, Kaddish, you can no longer be paid to that lechem. So, nothing else to do with it other than putting on harbais to serve as an indicator. Now, although he only did shechita, not zrika, how does that affect the lechem? How is it makadish? Ukeman kir rebbe? Are we following rebbe shita that whole dama rebbe? Shnei dvarim hamatir. Whenever we have two, two elements that are required to be matter or something. For instance, in this case, where the lechem only becomes muta b'achila if, if, there were two things that took place, shechita and zrika of the carbon. Nevertheless, says Rebbe, shnei dvar ha-matir, malen Not that you only have one, not the other. They are malen, they, they push up, they elevate, even one without the other. So, when we have a proper shechita, but not a proper zrika, although you haven't really completed the full process of the akrov of the carbon and therefore you can't actually eat the lechem but but the, the shechita which is a partial process a one matter at least can influence matters and can impart a partial kedusha onto that lechem to bring it up from kedusha's dumb monetary kedusha to kedusha guf which will preclude pidyon so we found that shita the sanya what do we find the shita kiv seat seris a mekachin es alechem el So, we know that just as the toida has bread, the kipsa atzeres, the two carbon shlamim that we bring on, on shvuas, we bring along with them two lechem, shte alechem. So they are only going to be mekadish that lechem if the, uh, you did shechita to the kvasa. Keitzad, shachtan lishman. We shechted the kvas on Lishman properly with a proper intention to make to turn into a a kvasatzer a proper carbon shlomim. So you did that properly. The zarek dam on Lishman and likewise the zrika. The zrika of the dam of the of the kvasatzer is done Lishman for the sake of the carbon with the proper intention. Kedesh lechem. So now at this point, everything is completed. The lechem is now fully kaddish, and you go ahead and eat it. However, if you didn't do it properly, shecht on shloigishman. You did the shechita, but with the wrong intention. Perhaps you had a uh, oil in mind. V'zorok dama shloyishman. Likewise, when it comes to the zrika, you did the zrika shloyishman. Lo yikidei shalechem. Lechem wasn't kaddish, because since it was shechem shloyishman, and zorok dama shloyishman, there's nothing to be mekadish to lechem, and you may not eat it. Not only are you not going to eat the lechem, it remains in its former status of klushas dam. Nothing happened to it. Now what happens if shachtan the shman, you did the shechita properly, but not the zrika, v'zorak dom and shalei the So one of the matirim were done properly, the shechita, but not the zrika. What happens then? Lechem, kodesh, and a kodesh. The lechem is kodesh, but not kodesh. A partial kedusha descends on the lechem. Divi Rebbe. So according to Rebbe, this lechem is now considered kedusha sakuf on account of the proper shechita, but you can't eat it because the carbon, the kipsi atzeres, weren't properly brought. The process wasn't properly completed. So some form of kedusha was applied, but not a complete kedusha, which would allow eating. So apparently, our Gemara, Rabbi Yame, who speaks about the 
Chala is toida, being uh, unfit for pidyon, and therefore they used it on the harbayis on account of the fact that the carbon had a shechita, the carbon toida that is, but not the zrika, which gave them kedushas haguf, but didn't allow them to be eaten. This limbo status, this kaddish and kaddish, is apparently in line with shita's rebbe holds that that is a result of a partial process. Rabbi Lezer, Rabbi Shimon, I mean, he says, no, there's never any Kaddish whatsoever here. Until he does the Shkita and the Zerika properly. Because one without the other is just a, an incomplete process and doesn't really affect the Lechem whatsoever. And you can go be paid it because it's only Kaddish Kedusha's dumb. has only monetary Kedusha, not Kedusha. He says, well, I feel tame, Rabbi Lezer, Rabbi Shimon. You know what, Rabbi Yamai can be in line even Shimon. my skin, you know what speaking about? He did the Shita on the Toida properly. When it came to the Zrika, he was Mekabel. He received the Dam in a container, in the Kais. But he never got to the actual sprinkling of the Dam. Vinishbach got spilled out. Rebelezab Shimon Savil Kavur. Rebelezab Shimon holds like his father, who says that even once it got to that point, it is already somewhat considered. Zrika. You have begun the Zrika process. The Omar, his father says, his father said, Kol dami. When something is slated for Zrika, it's sitting in a case ready to be sprinkled, it's as though Zrika has already occurred. So although in practice there was no Zrika, and therefore the Lechem is not really Mutter, but to some extent we view it as an initiation of the Zrika process. To the point that Kedushas Guf has now been Chal, has now descended on that Lecha. That's what we're speaking about here. You had a Toida, in which the carbon was Nishchat properly. Zrika was initiated. The Dam was brought into a Kais, but there was no Zrika, it got spilled out. So, although there was no Zrika, and the process wasn't complete, and therefore the Lechem is not Muta Bachila, but, however, the Lechem now according to all shittas, is Kaddish Kedusha Sakuf. Because it has a shita and it has the Zrika as well. Therefore, Pidyan can't be applied. It can't redeem it any longer. So, it's basically useless. And therefore, they used to use it for that indicator on the Harabayis to keep the public mindful of the Zmanim on Erev Pesach. So that's of Yama's version of events. Tonam Mishnur Beleza Amru so we have a Brisa, the name of Rebbe Lezer. He learns that actually the, the Chalis were perfectly fine. They were kosher. They weren't psalists whatsoever. And they would place it on the Harabais, up high. And that would serve as an indicator called Zman Shem Anochis. As long as both Chalis were present, the public would continue eating their Chalis. Little Achas man, when one was removed, Toilin, they would enter the state of limbo. What Toilin means, Loi Oichlin, they would no longer eat, but they wouldn't actually burn the chametz. They would have enough from the chametz. When both were removed, and no chalas were present up there any longer, everybody would begin the strafas chametz because that was a sign that the sixth hour has arrived. Asks Teisus, how can you go ahead and put chalas toida that are kosher up there and cause them to be burnt? Says Teisus, apparently, this, this uh, sheet of Rebelezer is in line with Rav Gam Lil, who holds that although chulin, you cannot eat past the fourth hour, but truma, you can eat another hour. And therefore, when it comes to the chalish toida, we regard them like, like truma since they are kaddish. And you can eat them all throughout the fifth hour. And Tesis explains that the, the last remaining challah would be removed a couple of minutes before the Zvan Strafe arrives to give them the opportunity to consume it. This way, it would not, it would not get lost. We have a final version of events. Tanya Basholaimer. We're not speaking about chalas that were placed there. They used something else as a simon. Shtei paris hayu chayshis baramishcha. There were two cows plowing on haramishcha, harazesim near Yishalayim. Kol zman shashtei in chayshis, as long as both of them were out there. Kolom ha'ichlam. So everybody would continue eating. Nitla achas men. Once one of the cows were removed. Toilin. They would enter the state of toilin, they wouldn't eat, but they wouldn't burn. Both were removed. 
his chilukulam surfin that indicate that the sixth hour arrived, and everybody began this Reif So in summary, the Bezdin arranged for some sort of indicator to keep the public mindful of these manamer of Pesach. We have four versions. According to the first version of the Gemara, there were two chalets that were nifsa. Why were they nifsa? Belina, because if you can't bring the toilet in our Pesach, it's certainly not our Pesach itself. So all would come with their karbanas on the 13th day. And due to the abundance of the chalis and a few eaters, some of them would become possible by lina, by remaining overnight. So now we have chalis toilet that are possible of Pesach, were placed up there to serve as an indicator, and then burnt when the time came. Rabbi Yanni's version was that these chalis were problematic because the toilet was nishchat, but there was no zrika. So they already have Kedushas HaGuf. And therefore you can't redeem them, but you can't eat them because the Torah wasn't properly processed. So they're pretty, pretty much useless and you have to take, and you can just take them and use them as an indicator. According to the third version of the Gemara, they were actually Chalas Ksheris. According to the final version, they were Shtei Paras Chershes. Two of these cows plowing away on Haram Mishcha. And that served as an indicator. As long as they were both out there, that indicated that it's still time to eat. Chametz, one of them was removed, that indicated that the fifth hour arrived. Once both were removed, it indicated that the sixth hour arrived, and it's time for a Shreyfaz Chametz. Okay, time for a quick Chazara. So we learned again that from Chatois onward, you may not eat Chametz min ha-tur. Min the Rabbanon, there's a Chakadon, to safeguard, to, to create that cushion, a leeway, to account for miscalculations. We have Machlokes, to what extent they applied that Gzir. According to Rabbi Meir, they pushed it back one hour, according to Rabbi Yudah, two hours. According to Ram Gamliel, when it comes to Chulin, you stop at four hours. According to, when it comes to Truma, we we'll give you another hour. Now regarding Halacha Lamaisa, we learned that both Rav and Rebbe passed like Rabbi Yehuda. We also learned regarding Erev Pesach that fell out on Shabbos. According to one sheet, that you burn everything before Shabbos, just leave yourself a bit for the two suitors of Shabbos, according to Chachamim. The Truma Tahira, just leave around just in case some surprise guests arrived. We learned about a picotin, which you go ahead and sell at the last moment in order to avoid the hefset. So that it becomes, it doesn't become useless. And this is a form of Ashava Saveda. We also learned about the concept of maintaining proper public image and perception. Visam Nikim. Mashem Misrael, not to evoke suspicion. And we proceeded to the uh, indicators, the two chalets that were placed on the Harbais, up high on the Gaga Istava. We have four versions, either there were chalas that were possible, chalas on which the carbon was nishchat but not nizrak, chalas ksheris, or to paris on harhazes.